What's going on everyone? My name's AJ and today we're going to be reviewing the Michelin Ness Wing... <laughs> Michelin Ness Wingman shorts in the Chicago Bulls and Toronto Raptors colorway. I got this Chicago Bulls pair in a size small and I got the Toronto Raptors one in a size medium just to further illustrate how they fit and I just wanted to let people know that the dimensions are quite similar but there are some differences. And we're gonna go through some of the pros, the cons, and if you guys should buy these shorts. So the retail on these shorts is $80 and the fabric content is 100% polyester all around and it's printed polyester. So as you can see throughout the front, the sides and the back of the shorts itself, it has printed designs. In this case, it's a print stripe on both shorts. And it has heat pressed appliques. So basically all the details are heat pressed, whether it be this Chicago Bulls logo or the NBA logo. And on the Toronto Raptors version, it's the Toronto Raptors logos and also the NBA logo itself. Both of these shorts come with some cool tags. It has the Mitchell and Ness tag, and then it has some barcode information style information and just the MSRP price on the back. It also comes with the typical hardwood classics tag. And then it has the NBA logo and all the holographic cool stuff stickers. And it says mba.com slash stores on the back. There's basically two versions of these shorts. There's a swingman and an authentic. I'm not saying these aren't real authentic shorts from Mitchell and Ness. It's more so a term that's like, these are the less premium versions. It's like when you buy a jersey and they have a regular version, which is more so for the fans and an authentic heavyweight version for on court and such. But it's not like, I guess, if you're in the NBA or if you aspire to be in the NBA, not taking anyone's dreams down, but let's just get into the differences. So one of the main differences between the Swingman and the Authentic short is first and foremost the materials. The Authentic short has a knit rib waistband and that kind of affects how it fits. It may be a little more snug on some folks just because of that fabric. And it looks like a majority of the Authentic shorts have twill patches embroidered rather than this either screen print or heat press design that you see on the Swingman versions. And on the inside, it usually has the team, the year, and some more details on the shorts itself embroidered on the inside of the short. And if I were to sum it up, I would say that the authentic short has a lot more cut and sew embroidery and details that feel a lot more premium or authentic to what a player would wear on court. Now the moment you've been all waiting for, sizing and fit. So like I said, the Bulls version is a small, and the Toronto Raptors version is a medium. So I intentionally got two sizes just to compare it. For reference, I'll put my waist informa information. <laughs> I'll put my waist information up here. I'm a size 30, 31 waist. I'm about 100 and maybe 78 pounds. I lost two pounds, was good. If you saw the last video, oh, and we're pulling out this handy dandy tape measure so we can just see what's up with the shorts. So this is me wearing the Chicago Bulls version in small and the waist actually measures 14 inches. So if you were to multiply that times two, it's about a 28 inch waist, but there's a lot of elasticity in the waistband. I'm not gonna say you could stretch it a lot, but let's say maybe about three to four inches. So even if you do buy a size small, you could probably pass if you're a size 32 or I would stop there because if you're a 33, these may be a little bit too snug for you. So like I said, the size small may be too small for you if you're a 32 and above. Let's just, to be safe, I'm gonna say 32 and above. And the Toronto Raptors version, this is me wearing that one, it measured with a 15.25 inch waist. If you multiply that by two, it's roughly 31 inches. And if you add that elastic band leeway, let's say about 35 to 36 inch waist. But like I said, if you are buying a size medium short, and you are a 35 or 36 size waist, I would definitely suggest buying a size large. So these shorts fit just above the knee and you could definitely tell the difference as the size small measured at 19.75 inches. And it was just a little bit more, but I definitely could tell the difference when I had it on my body where the medium size short was 20 inches in length. And it's really just your personal preference. I would prefer something that fits better on me. So if I were to give a suggestion, I would definitely get the size medium if I were a size 30 or 31 waist, because you can fit a size small. It would just be a little bit uncomfortable and a little tight. I was saying that the one I have is really uncomfortable. It fits me pretty perfectly because of the elastic band, but I just, 
like the way that the size medium fits on my body. The size small makes it seem like I'm actually gonna work out, but these are really casual shorts and it feels like I'm actually going to the gym in a size small where I'm a 30, 31 waist and I would prefer the medium over the small. And a big difference with these shorts between the size small and the size medium is actually the leg opening. So I don't know, not a lot of people have different kind of leg sizes. Well, I mean, if you work out your leg day. Anyways, in all seriousness, the leg opening between the size small and the size medium are quite different, where the size small has a 11.75 inch leg opening and the size medium has about a 13 inch leg opening. I guess you could measure your leg, just the circumference of your leg itself. In all likelihood, these shorts are probably going to fit you. I wore these with a pair of Air Force Ones and some black in and out socks and they pop really, really well. I know that my Air Force Ones are really brand new and really white, but that's how you gotta keep them. Wear them once, buy a new pair. I'm just kidding, save your money and clean them. But yeah, I really like how they look on feet. And this is a little bit of a POV version. I'm trying a new slow-mo thing with this new camera. Shout out Sony. And now onto the pros. I'm gonna say that my first pro is that the Mitchell & Ness Swingman shorts have quite a good value and price. The authentic short is typically a little bit more expensive than this Swingman short. So it's well above 100, if not sometimes $150. Whereas these Swingman shorts are typically retailed at around $80. These retail at $80, but I think I got this Toronto Raptors pair for about $70 and I got the Chicago Bulls pair for around $60. So if you find a good deal, whether it be like Fanatics or a lot of sports sites, there's a lot of cool teams and it's a great price as far as value goes. Another pro is that these are really easy to style, quite comfortable and easy to wear. You could wear these with a lot of cool shoes, obviously a lot of cool socks, and maybe like a baggy shirt. I wouldn't really recommend it with a tighter shirt or a more fitted shirt because they are a little bit more of like an athletic short. So it may not look good as far as the proportions. Another pro is along with the style, these shorts are really recognizable, whether it be a Toronto Raptors old school short, or even the most iconic team probably of the 90s, the Chicago Bulls short, everyone will probably be like, oh wow, that's a really cool short, or have a lot of memories on that style, and it's probably never gonna go out of style because sports teams, unless they're banished for life, like some Washington football team that I will not name of their mascot in the past, but yeah, in all seriousness, these are iconic teams and iconic shorts that will probably never go out of style. And another pro is that these shorts are really easy to cop. You're not gonna have to wait in a line or it's gonna sell out super quick, but they all eventually restock and I wouldn't really worry about the demand on these. I wouldn't buy these shorts on the resale market at all. Just make sure you find a sporting goods store or anywhere where you could get a good deal on these shorts and they're pretty easy to cop. I would say the last pro of these is that they're really nice fit. It has a modern sleek cut where if you size it correctly, you could work out in it, but I typically like it just to kind of casually hang out in and even you can, I guess, sleep in it. But typically I would size down if you wanna wear these to the gym, but I would wear these true to size if you just wanna hang out in it. You could technically work out in it, but these are too nice to like go swimming in or work out in, in my opinion. And I only had two cons. My first con is that I understand that these shorts could be really loud. I'm not saying they're the best fashion statement, but for some folks who don't like sports at all, or I guess aren't into shorts, I don't know why you would be watching this video if you aren't, um, but generally these might be too loud for some folks. Obviously there's occasions where you wear this and occasions where you wear a nicer, I guess, nicer short. Everyone has different taste and some of these colors may be too loud, but there are different teams and different colorways of these shorts that you could cop that aren't that loud. And a lot of the vintage looking items are really on trend. Like I said, that's a pro for some, a con for another. And my last con is that some of the quality control on this is a little bit subpar in my opinion. I see a lot of loose fabrics, but it's not like the short is falling apart. After you wear these shorts for a while, some of the print as far as the pinstripes and I guess some of the appliques and the details of the logos may come off, but I would suggest either hand washing these shorts or doing a very, very delicate cycle machine wash and tumble dry very low heat because I've seen some stories where people put in the washer really high heat and then dry it with really high heat as well. And then they're complaining about the shorts getting faded, the logos coming off. It's more so how you take care of your garment 
post-purchase, but the quality control isn't as good as the authentic, but that's why they have the authentic version because it's a lot more of a cut and sew piece that you would get if you want more of a quality short. But as far as the value in regards to price, these Mitchell and Ness Swingman shorts are actually a great deal. And all in all, I'm gonna say that the Mitchell and Ness Swingman shorts are a stylish, fairly priced piece that you could probably keep in your wardrobe forever. They're really comfortable. You could buy them in whatever team you like, and they're easy to cop. What do you guys think about these shorts? Leave a comment below. Once again, my name's AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, or even notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let go. Peace.